Hello everybody, I've recently posted to Reddit asking if anybody would like to see a Linux-based video recording and editing tutorial series. The answer was yes. And so now, let's begin with that. Now I was looking through the comments, a lot of people say they just switched over from Windows or that they just don't know how to even start. So, let's begin with how you start. Well, first off, we're going to want to download a program called Simple Screen Recorder. What I'm going to do first is set up the pretty much the most basic way to record well, basic, and it's also the fastest way to record. So, it's called simple for a reason. It's actually not too simple to configure, but everything has perfectly fine defaults. So let's go here, and here we are. Simple screen recorder. Martin Baird. I am not good at pronouncing names. Anyways, back to here. So, this is kind of what it looks like. I think it's changed a little bit since then. It looks mostly the same. Site's back end, I think. But this is where you want to look for. I'll put the links in the description. It has a lot of features. Pretty much forget about the live streaming, though, because there's a better program that can do that. Open Broadcaster Studio. It's been ported over to Linux, so... Hey, works a lot nicer. So here's all the instructions on this webpage to install it. If yours isn't on here, then go under Other. And for the most part, it's pretty easy to install on... There's a lot of different ways to do it. I'm on Arch Linux, so this is the way I'd have to do it, and I already have it installed, so nothing too special I gotta do here. So once you got it installed and all that great stuff, you're gonna wanna open it. So let's open it. And here we are. Get a nice rendered little PNG image here. I think it's a PNG. Who knows? It says, Welcome to Simple Screen Recorder. So here we go. Continue. Now I'm gonna set up some options for someone who just wanted to start out. So we have all these here. Record entire screen, record fixed rectangle, follow the cursor, and record OpenGL. Experimental. Even though it says experimental, this is actually the best option to use. Record entire screen is pretty self-explanatory. Records the whole screen. If you click on the option, it tells you which screen is which. Here's screen one. I only have screen one. Screen one it is. Record a fixed rectangle. This is used for selecting a specific window, like uh, my entire screen. It's not my entire screen, but the Firefox window behind. So, hey, selects a window, and it's, oh yeah, and also with the select window, you can select either inside or outside the window to include the window decorations or not. It's a nice little feature there I didn't know about for a while until recently. Follow the cursor. I've never used this before, but the idea is that you just get a rectangle and it follows your cursor around. I find it kind of pointless since you can just, you know, zoom in afterwards and record OpenGL. This is going to be the option you're going to want to use almost always and exclusively. It is the best option by far and gives the best results and is the most performant. Get the best FPS with this. And if you want to record using OpenGL, you can go to OpenGL settings and check all this stuff here. Really, the only thing you'd want to change around is these few options and maybe this one if you wanted to not have vSync on for some reason. Anyways, so for here, you can set up what command you want to use. I'm going to use Minecraft, because I can. You can have it launch automatically, or you can launch it now. And, well, you know, launch game, and it gives it a nice little launch. One second, guys. All right. If you get that all set up, you can just continue to the end, start preview, and here it is. It's recording the inside of the screen, and even though I have this window open it, it uh, window over it, it's still recording this screen no matter what. You have it over, under, doing all sorts of crazy stuff, and it tells you the FPS of the screen. See, so, look, if it's behind, it doesn't do full FPS. Never mind. It gives you the FPS of what you're working with, and you can stop the preview, and it still gives you that. All right. Now I'm going to record using OpenGL settings. I'm going to use this to test it out. Minecraft, big pointing teeth. Now, scale video. You can do this if you want. It'll just scale the video to whatever resolution you give it here. It's pretty nice. I don't tend to use it very often because you can just scale it later unless you're really limited on resources. So for example, if you're recording at 1080p, but your computer can't handle it very well, you can just scale it down to 720p, which is these this resolution right here, and it'll handle it a little bit better, just be slightly blurrier and smaller. Record cursor. Well, it tells it if it's going to record the cursor or not, and this also works in OpenGL mode, so everything's good. Record audio. Now this... I almost always have to record only the in-game audio, not the microphone audio. You'll see why I do that in a second. And you can use whatever back end you want. And this one, it's usually for recording game audio, it's monitor of something. In this case, built-in analog stereo. 
monitor. Has to be a monitor. Or you can use, record your microphone like I have there. Output. All right, so I got my recording here. And what I do for all my recordings is I have this big folder called Rec, which is just all my recordings. And a lot of this doesn't really go anywhere. Some of them are serious, some of them are not. It's just here. Anyways, I'm going to make a new one. I think it's going to call it test three because I already have a test two. No, I don't. Test three it is. <laughs> and then this would be the folder for the whole game that I'm recording. And I just do raw one. And this is the first recording I do. So I'm going to save it here. Save it as a .mkv. That's the important thing. Because this is the best container format to use. Because it can literally contain any codec you throw at it. That's the whole point of it. Okay, right now I have it set up for the NVIDIA encoder, but I'm going to assume you don't have NVIDIA encoder stuff because you have an older graphics card or just don't have NVIDIA in general. So I'm going to set it up to the default settings that you're going to want to use. Now under video, instead of codec here being other, you're going to want to use H.264. This is the best option by far. For a constant rate factor, 18 is considered visually lossless, kind of, but you know you can go up from there and it'll be smaller file size. Or you can go down from there, and it'll be a much bigger file size. And this here kind of explains it there. Setting changes the video quality. Lower means it's just recorded better quality. Higher means it's much worse quality, but the file size is much smaller. 18 should be what we record at no matter what. If you... Normally you're going to record at ultra fast, unless you have a really fast computer, then super fast. Because, or actually, super fast isn't that much more taxing. If you can get away with super fast at whatever frame rate you're trying to get, then use that because it ends up making the file size much smaller. I'm going to keep it at ultra fast because I'm already recording. <laughs> audio codec, just keep it uncompressed because everything else on here just kind of screws it up and makes your audio sound not as good. You can fix it later. And you can save profiles if you want to use different settings and you don't want to reconfigure all this. And now we're here. You can have a recording hotkey. You can do a sound notification. You can... Do whatever, start preview, and you can see exactly how it is. You can actually resize this and get an even bigger preview and change the frame rate to be whatever you want. So yeah, you can change the frame rate to whatever you want so you can get nice little previews, except that's a horrible idea. Just keep it at the five frames per second if you want to preview so that it doesn't destroy your computer resources. And you can see how it's turning out. All right. And because we're only recording the game audio, you're going to want to use something else to record your microphone audio. In this case, I just use Audacity because it's the easiest and freest, and I put the game audio through this anyways. Actually, I don't. Never mind. Okay, because we're only recording the game audio for this, we're going to want to record the microphone too. In this case, you're going to want to install Audacity, which is significantly easier to install than this program. Almost every Linux distribution has it. You just got to go install it your own way. Okay, so let's open up Audacity. One moment. It'll be here soon. You just gotta wait. It's just gotta be here. Gotta let it take its time. All right. So here we are, Audacity. I'm gonna make it smaller so that you can see it slightly better and about there. All right. On recording device, you're gonna wanna try and find some sort of device that records your regular microphone. This is kind of a trial and error thing. Usually it's default frunk my, er, God. Usually this is default front microphone zero. That's what I'm using and it ends up picking up my microphone here just fine. This is the main thing here, make sure that's pulse. And then you might wanna do this, click here to start monitoring. When I'm not talking, it goes down all the way to here like so. And when I am talking, it goes all the way up here. So that means, you know, it's working, it's recording the right thing. So what I wanna do, so I don't have to fix it that much later, is press the hotkey for this and click on this at the exact same time. So let's do that. You know, I would do the hotkey, except, you know, <laughs> I'm running simple screen recorder already to record my entire screen. All right, in that case, we're just gonna have to sync it up later, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Okay, let's try this again. Start recording, record there. And now we're recording two at the same time. All right, isn't that cool? Part of the cool kids now. All right. So let's go do something silly, like go in single player and just kind of fly around for a bit.
you're not going to be able to hear the in-game sound for now because I'm not recording it because I thought recording it like that would be stupid. I'm going to turn off shaders. That'd be a good idea so my FPS doesn't suck. All right. My FPS still sucks. Don't record two things at the same time. You're just going to destroy your computer. Anyway, here we are flying around, not flying around, getting about 40 FPS. I'm going to sit here for a second and I'm going to fix this. Looks like I'm not going to really be able to fix this, so we're stuck at 50, 40 FPS for the most part. <clears throat> if you're recording only one thing at a time, this will be much faster. And also, I'll show you a different recording method later that'll get rid of all this FPS drops, which includes an NVIDIA graphics card and a recent one at that. I think 700 series and later supports it, maybe 600, I'm not too sure about that one. But the NVIDIA encoder works far better than the software encoder for recording, not for live streaming. That's a big difference. All right, let's stop this recording. Get you out of here. Stop you. Stop. All right, see here. We got our microphone, and we got this. So that's recording using this way of recording. Now, let's go save this somewhere. Save project as. <coughs> Let's see here, I have it. It's in test three, raw one, mic, save. All right, so that's, way, that's that way of recording. Now, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, I'm gonna give you a much better way to record right here in one second. All right, so if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can do an NV encoder, which is just NVIDIA encoder, which is far faster and much better if you're recording on your hard drive. So let's go look at that. First off, you're going to install FFmpeg with the NV encoder support, which for me on Arch Linux, I have a package that does that already. But for anyone who's not on it, you basically get to compile FFmpeg yourself. Now, compiling FFmpeg itself is actually pretty well documented on nearly every operating system because FFmpeg is used almost everywhere. But installing specifically the NV encoder flag is not because, you know, it's a specific thing. But luckily, it's super easy to do, so I'm just going to show you here. So the big thing is that there... Oh. When you get to the configure step of compiling it, there's a whole bunch of stuff you want to get enabled. And besides the defaults you have there, there's only one thing you want to do. This one. Enable NV Enc. And it is the simple little option and it makes your life a whole lot easier and gives you the special encoder options. So just have that there and you get special FFmpeg version with it. All right, back to simple screen recorder. Now we go back to the options that we already had set up. Everything's all good and all that hunky dory. And the difference is here. Now we're gonna go click on here and go to other. And I already have it set up here. You're almost guaranteed to want to use this one or this one, unless you have a newer graphics card. I have a 960 and it supports this codec, and I'll tell you the difference between these two you know, right now. So it's the same exact difference between this one and this one. They're the same exact thing, just different encoders. <clears throat> the H264 version here, uh, it's supported by more graphics cards like earlier on, but it takes more bit rate to encode the same file as this one does. This one can do it in much lower bitrate and maintain the same quality. That's the only difference, really. Save space. Overall, the choice is yours. If you can use this one, I'd recommend using this one because it ends up working out nicer for you. Because, you know, smaller file sizes, that's always nice. Now, you can change some of the settings here. The bitrate, you're wanting to have something crazy high, like what I have here. This works fine for recording at even full HD. At full HD, I'd recommend even putting it to there. It's about the same. I'm going to keep it kind of low because I'm already recording. I'm actually going to keep it even lower because I'm already recording. And the preset here, you can set to whatever your NVIDIA encoder supports. There's a nice little list I'll put up somewhere so you can see what you can put here and what the difference is. In reality, you're going to almost guarantee to always use this one. Any of the other ones aren't really worth it. All right. I actually don't know if I've recorded two things at the same time using this technique, but we're going to find out right now. So I'm gonna click start recording and see, oh wait, wait, we're forgetting something. Audacity. All right, we are not gonna use the hotkey because that broke last time, so let's just record it normally. Hello. It's, it's starting, it's starting, it's recording. All right, so we're good. And my FPS is much better. I'm gonna put on VSync now so I don't get weird frame choppy things. 
So now I'm recording at full HD and in 720p on two different videos, 60 frames per second. And, you know, works great. Both of them on the NVIDIA graphics card. And look at my CPU usage down here. Only about halfway, or it was, and then there was a spike. Well, you know what? It's much less than trying to encode two different videos on the CPU at once. That would probably crash my computer, even though I have a nice computer. Look, someone's online on Steam. Anyways, so here we are. Minecraft. Go run around. This is a video I'll probably use to do some test edits with. So, hey, why not? In that case, I'm going to go fly around, turn on F1, and just fly. Oh, okay, things are on fire, and I'm lag spiking. That's not good. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe I'll record a different video later. These lag spikes are kind of breaking it. When you're just recording one video, you shouldn't get any of these lag spikes. I'm just doing crazy things for you guys. All right, let's finish up here. And that is recording using Simple Screen Recorder. This is a method you're probably going to want to use unless you have something special you're trying to do or you're trying to make it really easy on yourself later, even though you won't be able to make good videos later if you do it using the Open Broadcaster Studio way. All right, now on to Open Broadcaster Studio, which, I mean, installing this is actually a little bit... I'm not sure if it's trickier. Most things don't actually have it yet. Let's see, Linux... Of course, the multi-platform version source code is available here, which is pretty much what I'm using. And installing this is much different. <laughs> Let's see. I'm on Arch Linux, so things are significantly easier for me to set up. No big problem there. On Linux, okay. So here, this gives you a lot of different ways to install it. And apparently the only official way to install it is on Ubuntu, so take that. So let's see, it tells you install FFmpeg, add a repository that's specifically for OBS Studio, update and install it. So hey, not that, e not that hard at all. Any other distribution you're using, you could probably find it on here. And if you're using something really weird, you probably know how to do it yourself because you managed to install that really weird distribution. Uh, unless you got something not weird and somehow it's not on this list, then uh, <laughs> this is pretty much the way you're going to have to use it. It's in Linux portable mode. All right, now let's see, you have OBS Studio installed, so let's start it up. OBS. OBS Studio is nice, but has a tendency to crash, actually, which is not very good. Hey, look, I have a webcam. Too bad my webcam's really dark. Haha, <laughs> take that. Oh, that's just my camera. Okay, here's my screen, my entire screen. How about let's record just the thing. All right, OBS Studio, which is a lot more full-featured than... A simple screen recorder, but is a bit laggier, especially because it does this live preview thing all the time. So you're in OBS Studio. Now, recording is similar. I'll tell you the things that are the same. Live streaming is a big thing you can do on here. Anyways, things that are about the same. If you... Okay, there's a simple mode here so that you can set up the bitrate and all that stuff if you want to do it simply. There's not much you can do. If you want to record and using simple mode, it just tells you what kind of quality you want to use. Hey, and it gives you even presets. That's nice. The format, custom settings, if you... I don't know why that's on simple, but yeah. What I'm going to use is advanced so that I have much more control over what I'm using and what I'm doing. So let's go under recording, because right now we're still recording. We aren't live streaming yet. So what we're going to want to do is use a custom output using FFmpeg. That allows us even more control over what we're doing. We're going to want to output to a file, because that's what we're doing. Use a file, path, or URL. I'm just going to throw it on the desktop because I don't know what to do with it. Container format, you're going to want to use Matroska, which is the exact same thing as MKV format we were using earlier, which basically lets you use anything you want in it. Video bitrate. Here we are. Right now, I'm using... Hey, look at that. I'm using the NVIDIA encoder again. So, in that case, I'm going to want to use a much higher bitrate, not the 3500 I was putting there. So that... There you are for NVIDIA encoding, you can just use that, and then use the audio bitrate you want. This is another reason I don't use OBS for recording, is that the audio bitrate you actually don't have that much control over. You have to use AAC audio encoder on this, or else things will break. AAC. And there's audio tracks on here too, which don't make much sense, but just gives you different bit rates to work with. In reality, you're just going to only have this on audio track 1 and just use whatever bit rate you want. If you're streaming, use this. If you're recording, use this. This for recording, this for streaming, 
unless your stream, unless you use like that or something. Anyways, back to recording. And then if you're using, if you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card, you will want to use libx264, which is a default encoder anyways. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to set the bitrate to stupid high because this is not what we're going to use. We're going to use this thing, control rate uh, factor. I'm not sure what that stands for exactly, but it's the exact same thing that we're using in simple screen recorder. So just set that to 18 and everything's good. That's the only thing you're going to have to do. Click apply and you can record all you want. Audio devices. This is where things get interesting. You have a desktop audio device, which already gives you only the choice to use monitor. So that's good. And mic slash auxiliary audio device. In this case, we're using the AT2020 USB microphone I have. And you can have multiple of these, actually, which is pretty cool. And you have push to talk, push to mute, all those things. On here, we have a base canvas resolution and an output scaled resolution. I typically have these the same for recording and just have it at whatever resolution the game's playing at so that it's just about as equal as it can be. But if you are scaling, you're going to want to have this set to the best scaling you can. Sharpen scaling, 32 samples. And then your FPS is whatever FPS you want it to be. Hotkeys, you can use this to set up hotkeys for muting your microphone or recording or really anything. If you add scenes, they can automatically set up hotkeys for you, which is nice. Uh, let me just ignore that. I mean, on here, the only thing really interesting is the stream delay. Other than that, you really shouldn't be in that tab unless you know what you're doing. And that's everything for OBS Studio. Oh, and uh, you can overlay things. Where's my game? Screen capture, screen capture, add, screen capture. And if you already have something added, just go to add existing. You can add it there. There's that. It should be under the video capture. And you're not going to see my face. You can see my headphones there. They're pretty, pretty sweet. You can see them. They, like, shine off. All right. <laughs> and you can do whatever. Move it around. Or it doesn't really matter. You can do a lot with them. There is probably a whole entire video I can do of all the effects you can do in OBS Studio. So I'm not going to do it because that's basically just live streaming. And I'll make a separate live streaming video later. And you'll see everything there. All right. So that would be mostly the... Oh, wait. There's one thing I forgot. Um, actually, no, I didn't. So what I'm thinking is using different video and audio codecs. And stuff like that later will be uh, after you render your video. So that you know what you're going to use, what will give you the best quality, what will do all that. Right now, we're recording specifically for speed. We are not going for size, the minimum size. We want it to be pretty much the biggest size we can handle so that we have the best quality to work with later when we're editing. Oh, there is something I forgot. So you want to record Steam games, right? Like this guy here is playing Steam. He's apparently playing a game that I've never heard of before. So in that case, I would not recommend using OBS for any source engine games because that gives me horrible frame rate issues. Even at my amazing GTX 960 graphics card. Not that amazing, but shouldn't be frame rate on like Half-Life 2, for example. So... Let's go get out of here. Don't need you anymore. And get out of OBS Studio. Now, you can use this if you want to do capturing for a game. Just use Window Capture and select whatever you're using. Oh, gosh. If it's not open, then it just shows that. Desktop. Hey, look, my desktop. And also, this has a tendency to crash, actually, so be very careful when adding Windows. Screen Capture works fine, but Window Capture has a tendency to crash if you minimize your window a bunch. All right, and let's go on to recording Steam games. Martin Bart is already a pretty cool guy and gives you a pretty good example of recording Steam games right here. So let's see, recording Steam games right here. And this is a little, nice little picture tutorial. Basically, go to set your properties of your game, set launch options, and SSR-GL inject, and then the command. And you got to disable the Steam overlay, because then in that case, Steam has some serious issues with the overlay, usually. The only thing downside of that, really, is you can't shift tab. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to give an example of running a Steam game through Simple Screen Recorder. So let's start up Simple Screen Recorder. Hey, how you doing, Simple Screen Recorder? How you doing? Yeah. In this case, 
you are not going to want to launch the application here. Have that completely empty. You'll see why soon, because you can't exactly launch a Steam game outside of Steam. I'm going to use the settings I'm already have here, all that stuff. And before I even click Start Preview, I mean, I can, but I won't see anything. So before I get recording, let's get into Steam and find a game. I'm going to use a Source Engine game to prove that it actually records pretty nice. I mean, you can already see in my kind of strike videos if you watch those. They actually record pretty nice. So in that case, eh, let's record Counter-Strike, sure, why not? So let's go to Properties. And this is the major thing. Make sure this is disabled or else you're going to get problems. And then Set Launch Options and pretty much paste that in. That's the only thing you got to do. Click OK and, you know, done there. You click Play. This might start in full screen. One second. All right, here we go. We got Counter-Strike opened up. And if we start the preview now... Hey, look, it's Counter-Strike. You can see it behind. And it'll record just fine for everything. Record 1080p. And if you're using the NVIDIA encoder, you can record 60 frames per second easily, even at 4K if you have a new graphics card. Which, if you have 4K, you probably do have a new graphics card because graphics card is cheaper than the freaking monitor. All right. So you can set up all your settings however you want, whatever you can to get the FPS you're looking for, either 24, 30, 48, 60... 29.97. I don't know what kind of frame rate you're looking for. Really anything. But if you can reach your frame rate at desired resolution, then you're set and your video will look fine. So I'm not even going to try recording in this. Well, I mean, I can try recording in it, but I'm just going to lag my system down pretty bad. And this will work for almost any game in Steam. If game doesn't work, then just use the... If a game doesn't work for some reason... Just use the record fixed rectangle, select window, and just click on your game. And it'll do the same thing, except windows can overlay over it now. But other than that, it'll record the same exact area, and everything will work fine. This recording a window is a lot slower than recording OpenGL, so keep that in mind. Okay, I think I officially got through everything. Thanks for watching. And hopefully I'll get a new editing video out soon. And maybe even a live streaming video. Who knows? <laughs> Anything I missed, which I might not have now. That was kind of the thing that was bothering me. Now that I remembered, I don't think I missed anything. But if I still did, yell at me. This is just a recording video. More stuff later. See ya.